Hello everyone and welcome to the PMU Season 10 Clash. Now this is basically the preseason of the new season. I'm AJ Kelson, your host, your commentator for today. And boy do we have a wild one on our hands. It's been a while, but we are back. And let's take a look at the entry list for this year's Clash. We got last season champion, Alrighty Alejo, looking to gain some momentum. Uh, he's not the best super speedway racer. But he can always pull something out of his hat. He's one of the biggest underdog stories in the PMU Cup Series. And, I mean, I guess all the odds, he won the championship last season. Came back from injury, won it. Two years in a row, that's someone that came back and won the championship. So, we got Cam Wright Sr. And let me turn the volume down real quick. So we got Cam Wright Sr. who shockingly moved over to Leland Motorsports in the 5. Now that's interesting because Junior drove the 5 for Leland Motorsports and, you know, Toyota, I mean, there was no really Dodge teams left for Cam Wright Sr. to go to, but he went to Toyota, uh, another manufacturer, uh, Railfan Motorsports downsized the one car, so you're going to see a lot of their guys on different teams. Solomon Sheridan. What may be his final PMU Cup Series uh, season in the 11 for CT Motorsports. Uh, he's looking to go out with a bang as he heads to the IndyCar. It's not the last time we'll see him, but it might be the last time we see him. Eddie Flores Jr. in the 12 moved over from his own team, Hunt Brothers Racing, which went defunct. Uh, uh, now he's driving for Next Gen Racing in the 12, uh, replacing Owen Scott, who, who, who left that team. Henry Guo. A rookie in the 14 replacing uh, Jack Halleck after she fell out with the team after a tremendous season. And some just say she should have won the championship, but due to the new format, that did not come to be. Owen Scott for Wolverine Racing. Yes, Wolverine Racing is uh, an extension of Sheridan Wright Racing. It is a new team bought out by Olivia Reynolds. A uh, three-car team. Uh, and Owen Scott looks to... Uh, come back to the Chevrolet camp and stay in the Chevrolet camp and uh, see what he can do on a new team. That is a CTM affiliate. Treshaw Meeks returns to his first ever uh, number that he won the championship with back in season one in the 19 for Leland Motorsports. Uh, he's looking to gain some momentum, uh, looking to probably win another championship after that heartbreaking season last season where he probably should have won his third but ran out of fuel in the closing laps. Roberto Kind Jr. coming from Rail Fan Motorsports brought back his own team, Crown Ultra Racing, in the 21. He's looking to gain some momentum and try to revitalize some of this, uh, his career. Andre Wilson in the same boat. Uh, their team's doing okay. I mean, not a bad driver. Uh, looking for some momentum like a lot of these guys are. I've said that a thousand times already, but, you know, Andre Wilson has won a couple races, looking to win some more. Cameron Jr., what is probably the most shocking J uh, silly season story in the PMU Cup Series coming off of Season 9. JC Motorsports has returned as a single-car organization and is fielding for Cameron Jr., who is returning for injury for the first time since Daytona uh, in the playoffs. Zach Carrington in the 44 came up short last season in the championship four, didn't have the best of runs, but he is looking to go for another good season. Jay Chevalier in the 47, who shockingly got a win for Petty Junior Motorsports in the 43. Uh, I mean, what can you say? Las Vegas, uh, a lot of guys question the move. And Jay Chevalier proved why he should be in that car, and he's going to prove this season why he should stay in that car. 48 of Dylan Hayden, uh, a little bit of a name change for Petty Junior Motorsports. Uh, Dylan Hayden's same car organization now, uh, dropped the 43, and he's looking to... Trying to get back in the kick of things. It's been a while since we've seen him up front. And he's just going to try to do that in that SRNN Chevrolet. Eric Shuko in the 51, a single car team. Uh, a rookie, much like Henry Guo. Looking to impress some people here in the clash. Leland Hill, in another shocking turn of events for Silly Season. Goes over the SLR and leaves his own team. Brings the 54 with him. Looking to get that organization back to his glory days. Nathan Orman for Wolverine Racing. After having a really good performance for SLR during the few races he substituted for, 
in the 52, one sh uh, the Coca-Cola 600, and now he is in his own ride full time, a rookie, looking to possibly win Rookie of the Year this season and maybe a few races. Nick Tander for Furry Row Motorsports. Yes, Furry Row Motorsports. Sabre Fox bought out Southern Cross Ra Southern Cross Racing and went over to Honda. Honda is now fielding a four-car team. Drew Walker with Blake Parker Enterprises in that 77. Nothing much changed with him. Had a good season last season. Looking to improve on it. Sabre Fox, a new owner driver, looking to possibly get her for, uh, their first career win. Olivia Reynolds in the 88. New font, new look. New, uh, just a, trying to build on her own brand of identity here in the 88 for CT Motorsports. Got a win last season at Talladega. And... Unfortunately, her playoffs were cut short, and uh, she took off the rest of the races, returned to Auto Club, didn't have the best of runs, but she's looking to build on it. Matthew Hill in a three-car team for Ford, uh, looking to, what's the word here, looking to just build on what he had last season. Two wins, swept Homestead, so look out for him at those two tra as th at that track. Uh, I mean, tremendous talent. I don't think he, uh, for his own team, I believe, he is an owner driver now. So he's just trying to build, and I've said that a thousand times too, but he's trying to get some more wins under his belt, maybe run for the playoffs this season. David Scott in the 92, probably the most controversial driver in this damn field. Uh, what more can I say about him? He's the trouble kid, the trouble ch troublemaker, the trouble child. But, uh, in all seriousness, he's a really good driver. He has the talent to do uh, what he needs to get done, and if he just keeps his head out of his a-hole, I mean, uh, he might make a run at the playoffs this season and not get himself booted out just before the championship four. So let's get things on the way. Let's check out practice who's on top so far. As you see, all, the last season's champion, Alvaro Alejo, is on the top of the board with Meeks, Owen Scott, Roberto Conjecture, and Chase Chevalier. Round out your top five for practice. Let's see who qualifies on the pole. Drivers, Drew Walker gets the pole. Eric Shuko in second. Nick Tander third. Leland Hill fourth. Nathan Orman fifth. Roberto Conn Jr. sixth. Seventh, Guo. Eighth, Wilson. Ninth, Carrington. And Wright Jr. And rounds out your top ten. Alejo on top in practice, but last in Qualifying. Owen Scott, David Scott, Cameron Sr., and Olivia Reynolds with poor qualifying efforts. But qualifying doesn't matter too much here, but it depends on if you want to avoid the big one or you don't. So we're going to start halfway down the backstretch here. Drivers, hopefully, not skip the green flag. I skipped the damn green flag. Drivers. Hopefully, everybody gets going. As they do. A little bit of a late start for Walker. As they get themselves situated. There is the field that is running the season 10 clash. Now, excuse me if I stutter, stumble in my words, or uh, mispronounce some things or put or mess up my S's and R's because that's what I do. That's my thing and hopefully this is a good one. Let's see how it goes. Here we go. Green flag is out. Boogity 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 boys. Let's go racing at Daytona. And Olivia Rose. Walker being pushed out ahead here. Maybe a little bit too far. As we're going to take you, crank it up really early here in the race.
Bonjour Wilson leads that lap as he takes you from the view of the stands. Everything's double file right now, nothing too crazy. A little bit of shuffling for the lead here at the front. See the run that outside lane gets on the backstretch. That could determine if that outside lane stays the lead. And especially if they're three wide for the lead, that outside line is typically going to get the run. But right now, the lead's kind of stabilizing with these two at the front. Foreman leads that lap. Owen's got a little bit off the pace in the back, trying to stay with the draft. Three wide here, Zach Carrington had enough of a single file up front and he wants to head to the front. Let's see where Jay Chevalier goes, he might go to the middle here, leave Carrington out to dry, he has no help. And now, Eddie Flores Jr. going to drop to the bottom, that was smart. Pretend you're going to go with the 47, then quickly cut back to the bottom and Drew Walker might get down, be able to get down here, Eric Shuko will not. Or no, Eric Shuko will get down to the bottom. As you know, Nathan Orman has now got out to the lead on that outside lane. If those are the outside lane, it's especially dangerous. If you go three wide, that they're always going to get that run on the back straight away. Especially if the push comes at the right time. Now, Nick Tander looking back for the lead here. Got the run from the 14. And that outside lane, that's where the majority of the run is, is going to come in the 500. That outside lane on the back straightaway. Nick Tander will not lead that lap. It goes to Nathan Orman. Nathan Norman held up on the outside before. Let's see if he can do it again. Is that Carrington thinking about it? Thinks twice. He's not going to pull out through. Wide. Has to let off the gas just a little bit. Lose a little bit of his run. Backing up to the 12. Going to get a huge run here. I might shoot this uh, inside lane up enough where Tander can lead the lap. Oh no, Flandre Wilson's going to go three wide. Change that real quick. And Tanner forced into the middle. I don't think that's where he wants to be. But he is clear. No, he's not. Nick Tanner shoves his nose just in enough. I don't think the 71 can get down to the bottom. Flandre Wilson messes up the entire... Organization of the lead is now things start to shuffle around big time. Carrington looking for the lead. Flodger Wilson went down the block, but it's too late. Almost a little bit of contact there. Luckily, Flodger Wilson pulled up at the right time. But now Carrington's going to look for the lead. His first lap of the class. Things start to get a little bit wild here, three wide. They do have to pit, I believe, in this race. 
so watch out for that. No one can make the full distance on fuel. Here comes Eddie Porter Jr. for the lead. Getting that huge push from Dylan Hayden. Zach Carrington might be able to hold on to lead the lap, but he won't. That goes to the 12. As now you see the field start to go three by three. And even for the lead, here comes Dylan Hayden. What a move to the inside by the veteran in the 48. He has a spark and a fire inside him. And he is determined to have a good season. I talked to him uh, a few minutes before this race, and he said he feels this is going to be a good year for him and his entire team. Four wide almost in the back. Luckily that got sorted out. You're still looking low as David Scott takes the lead from Dylan Hayden, who wasn't able to the block in time. Cameron Sr. moving up right behind David Scott. There's no love loss between these two. Now the race starts to pick up. 50 laps here at Daytona. We've done 10 of them. Here comes Senior. Looking to get a push from all the way to I don't think he has enough of a run. As you see the intensity of the field picking up. Right Senior all over the back quarter panel of the 92. David Scott, Hayden leads that lap on the outside. Side draft of the 92 really hard there. He was able to lead that lap. Hayden that doesn't have any quit on him. I'm telling you, he is going to be one to watch in this upcoming season. Going to get a huge run down the back stretch. David Scott thought he was clear, trying to move up, but he wasn't. That 48 got a push. Now the field starts to calm down just a little bit up at the front. Dylan Hayden got that lap or two, I believe. Dylan Hayden gets those good pushes on the outside of Claude de Roos and two Chevrolets. Now Ray and Alejo look to push Cameron Senior, but Sheridan's had enough of that and is going to try to push Cameron Senior possibly to the lead. That is his team owner, but Alejo sticking tough and might be able to clear Sheridan right here. And he is not able to. Sheridan going to get a huge run from the 90 and that 54 who's pushing him. Let's see if he tries to pass his team owner or is he going to push him? Looking low, but decides to stay with him. Dylan Hayden wasn't able to get the lap led that time, but he doesn't have much help behind him. Roger Wilson, his pushing partner, got disconnected a little bit there on that lap. And Sheridan's going to boot his team owner up the track and look for third, or second, excuse me. David Scott blocking both top lanes. The senior's really pitching the 48 here. Here comes Sheridan down low. David Scott needs to go down the block. And he will as David Scott takes firm control of the lead. Matthew Hill in that 90 car. Not sure what type of scheme that is, but I uh, wonder who painted it. Here comes Sheridan for the lead, pushed by Matthew Hill, his former team owner. But Leland Hill, I don't think he's having fun pushing Matthew Hill. They're not related. But as you can see, the field three wide everywhere. Look at Matthew Hill looking low, faking to the outside. That was a really good move by a very young driver. Let's we'll see what Leland Hill does. He's 
Saber Fox forcing Olivia Reynolds up through the middle. As you see the cars go down the back stretch. Here comes Leland Hill for the lead. See if you can get the push. Don't believe he will. And he'll try to clear, and he does. Narrowly clear from Matthew Hill, because we're going to go on board with him. See if Leland Hill is really antsy to get to that lead. Sean Meeks making a move in that 19. His first race back into the 19, and God knows when. And he might get underneath Leland Hill. He does. What a huge run that Owen gave that 19, along with everybody else in the inside line. Matthew Hill having a firm lead right now, able to hold it. He's going to give the draft to Leland Hill. Maybe Leland can clear the 19 here. I'm not sure. It looks like he will. Leland cuts down in front of the 19. And no, Leland Hill's going to take the run he just got and use it to try to pass. Pull the lead, Leland Hill. Leland will lead that lap. First lap play of the day, lap 54. In his new SLR Ford. But now Meeks looking on the back bumper of his team owner. The man who gave him a return back to the 19. Meeks going to look low. He tries to peek low. Leland tries to block, but he's there. Meeks to the lead. Can he get enough, a big enough push to lead the lap, though? Owen Scott's going to ditch. Owen Scott, three wide for the lead. What an aggressive move by the man who's won here at Daytona. He is one of the best plate racers you'll see here in the PMU Cup Series. And that right there was why. Clear of the lead, blocks Leland Hill, blocks the outside where the most momentum is coming, gonna come from. But now he's gotta get down to that bottom really quickly. And he can't do it. Guo just got too much of a run being pushed by Cam Wright Jr. As now a rookie, another rookie's gonna head to the lead. But it looks like Owen Scott's gonna lead the lap. Now Jr.'s gonna force a three wide for the lead. Three wide galore here at Daytona. Not a single it's given on this racetrack as Junior takes the lead. But Jay Chevalier might have something to say about that, and he does. He's going to look to the bottom. He's got the help from a Chevrolet behind him, Nathan Orman. Jay Chevalier looking for the lead. Henry Guo pushing his team, uh, the Chevy affiliate teammate. But I don't think it's going to be enough for him to lead the lap. Jay Chevalier is. No, Junior does lead that lap. Junior will lead that lap. But he's going to need a tremendous push from the 14 if he wants to even get to the lead and get clear. You rarely see that type of. Uh, Move on the outside where the leader, uh, the guy on the outside clears for the lead. But Jay Chevalier is getting a huge push from the 71. Both lanes getting massive pushes as another third lane reforming behind them on the inside. Nathan Orman might be looking for the lead. He might want it.
watch out. Chevalier is going to lead that time. He gets his lap led. Fast slap of the race belongs to the 17. Oh, God. That Spotify, I didn't mean the Hanchi car. Really shines on the track. It's almost got a ghostly apparition to it because that's the, that's that was its intent. You can scan the car, listen to the album. We'll get you actually a close up of that. There you go. Scan it. You listen to the album. It's a very good album. I'll listen. But there's your plug. Then maybe for that. Wide here, Zach Carrington. While we we're on the onboard can, Zach Carrington looking three wide, really pinching the 71 up the track there. Now the field starts to go three wide again. Junior still holding strong on that outside lane, but I don't know how much stronger he can hold if he doesn't get a good push. He lost his pushing partner in the 14. But he's still side by side with Jay Chevalier heading into the trial. And he almost led that lap. And Junior using the side draft to keep him up and the helps from the 71 and 87. Watch this run down the back stretch. I don't think he's going to clear Chevalier. Jay Chevalier moved back up in the line. He thought he was clear, but that outside lane just gets us such a good run on the back straightaway. But now Carrington is looking to push that 47 past that 36. Junior getting a huge push here. Chevalier leads again. You see, as we are approaching, I believe we are halfway. Yes, we're halfway through the race. Feels trying to calm down in the back. Just trying to make it to the possible fuel window. I don't know if any of these guys can make it. Some might try to push it. But you see how close the margin is every time they go by. It's not much of a gap. That's how even these two lanes are right now. It's just going to be a matter of who makes a move and where. Six did lead that lap. Cam Wright Jr. about a few months ago had a devastating wreck. 
that took him out of the playoff contention. We didn't know when he returned, and he was at, put out for the rest of the season. And here he is. Didn't think he'd have a ride. Didn't know where to go. Didn't have a home. And now he's found it in Jerry Chin Motorsports. The unlikely return of such a once dominant team driving a Chevrolet for the first time since, I believe, season one. He's won some races, but he still has a lot to prove. He has a chip on his shoulder. And Cam Wright Jr. is just, I think this is a make or break year for him. Not just the fans, just for him. He's got to put up some numbers. I don't think he'll be satisfied with, with himself if he doesn't. Jay Chevalier, he also has something to prove. I mean, he's been doubted for every season he's been in the league. And, you know, everybody questioned the move. Like, Cam Wright Sr. signed Jay Chevalier to this 47 car. And he went out with one Las Vegas in an underfunded, under-equipped car and passed Leland Hill to do it in the closing laps. I mean, these are... These two guys right now are just dominating the race, controlling this race. These are two guys with a lot of things to prove. His junior led that other lap as well. Owen Scott still holds on to the fastest lap as we are 20 laps to go. Time is ticking for these drivers to move up through the field. Right now, they're just trying to get to the fuel window that I believe exists. Like I said, I'm not sure if they can make it all the way or not. Not much changing in the pecking order here. McTander thinking about looking outside, inside of Zach Carrington. Thinks better of it. Sheridan going up through the middle, I believe. Lejo tried to pass the uh, 11. I think he did. He backed up. Got a huge run. And no, uh, here comes Matthew Hill, the first to come down pit road. I'm not sure if that's for an issue or if it's pit stops. And I believe it is pit stop because if they pit now, they can make it the rest of the way. Matthew Hill's going to undercut, but he's by himself, so he has no drafting partners. That slowed down. Trayshawn makes it a little ill. So watch out for the chaos that might ensue during these pit stops. Here comes the rest of the field down pit road. Uh, who's going to come this time? There goes Jay Chevalier diving down pit road. Oh, uh, Eddie Flores Jr., Owen Scott, David Scott. Junior stays out and leads the lap. Trayshawn Meeks, Owen Scott, Roberto Crown Jr. Uh, David Scott, Eddie Flores Jr., Jay Chevalier leads this group down pit road. Second group to pit. See, Nathan Orman got a huge run with no drafted partner behind Junior. He's going to look for the lead. And here comes Junior, Orman, Carrington, Henry Guo. Oh, my goodness, Flandre Wilson. Almost hit Nick Tander back there. CD's group coming down. Eric Hugo coming down as well. There's Jay Sampler exiting pit road. 75 had to slow down. I'm not sure if he went over the speed limit. Now he's speeding up. Unsure what that was about. We head back for Dylan Hayden, who stayed out along with Saber Fox. And there's still a large group that has not pitted yet. This is the last group. Hayden's going to stay out, but everybody else 
Goes in. I'm not sure about that, Hayden. Hayden on a bold strategy, going out by himself with no drafting partner. This is probably the biggest group they've had. Solomon Sheridan, Olivia Reynolds, Leland Hill, Drew Walker, a lot, uh, already Alejo, Cameron Senior, and Sabra Fox. That is a lot of champions in there, and a lot of veteran drivers. See, David Orman comes out ahead of Cameron Jr. There's Chevalier. They're going to get past Jr. I believe Dylan, Dylan Hayden come, came down the road. There he is. And he's going to come down this time. Henrik Woe might have lost the draft. We're going to have to keep an eye on who the leader is here. No cars yet. Dylan Hayden must be strolling down pit road right about now. And there they are. That is Saber Fox, I believe, leading that group. There's Dylan Hayden. There's Saber Fox and company. He's gonna get blasted by here in a second. Watch out. Hey, try to get up to speed so we can fall in line with the rest of these guys. There they are. Might shake up this pack a little bit, slow some of them down. Right by Dylan Hayden, the Saber Fox is going to lead the lap. up in this pack. Owen Scott, David Scott, a lot of those guys are pitted together. This group fell back a little bit. They're going to need to work together if they want to catch up. But that is a pretty big pack ahead of them. The two leaders side by side. Jason Lear got a huge run out of nowhere. Dylan Hayden slowing that pack up just a little bit. Going to allow Drew Walker and company to catch back up. Jay Chevalier heads back to the lead here in the clash in the closing laps of this race. As you see some of the people that are off pace. Eric Shuko, Nick Tander, Solomon Sheridan, and Henry Guo. I'm not sure what happened to him, but he is way off the pace. Along with Flandre Wilson as well. Reynolds trying to catch up with the second group. Now Camright Sr. has made a move for the lead. But the 48 going to get a huge push to the 47. And I'm surprised Dylan Hayden's strategy actually worked. Pitted by himself, the last one to pit, and comes out with the lead pack. Dave Savalier building himself a gap. I'm not sure what he has in that car, but it's really, really fast. Cameron Senior looking for some help to close in on this 47, and as this looks to be our final pack, I don't know if Leland Hill and the others can catch up in time. Here we go. The closing stages of the race. This Cameron Senior looks low on Jay Sevalier. But he has no help. Eddie Ford Jr. not going to go with him. Ten laps to go here at Daytona from the clash. Said that completely backwards. Ignore that. The five looking to get a push from Owen Scott. But Jay Shavler's going to battle down the backstretch, trying to get a push from Eddie Flores Jr. 
Owen Scott side by side with his old cars. Junior looks low on David Scott trying to get the help from Sabre Fox. Jay Chevalier is going to clear for the lead. A tremendous push from that 12. It looks like Leland Hill will catch up with these guys. So they're going to have a shot. Nine laps to go. I don't know if Cam Wright Sr.'s car is strong enough to be leading that inside lane. Jay Chevalier with a commanding lead right now. As Leland Hill is caught up with his pack. The other's a single file trying to catch up as well. Roberto Count Jr. might be the next one to join us. Eight laps to go. Eddie Flores Jr. clears for second. And yeah, I don't think Senior is quick enough on that inside line. I believe he's holding them up. Here comes Eddie Flores Jr. What a move by himself on the inside to the 47. Senior might be a better pusher than a shover, but Owen Scott does not want to test out that theory. He's tired of the five holding up the inside lane, and he's looking to assist his old car and to get to the lead. But Jay is still going to lead that lap as Junior forces it three wide with Owen Scott, Cam Wright Senior. 7 trying to clear. He got a huge run, but the 12 saying, uh uh. What will the 36 do? We know he's quick. He hanged up here with the 47 for a while. Here comes the 36, going to force it three wide. Cam Wright Jr. looking for the lead in the closing stages of the race. Coming back to the flag. Six laps to go. Neighbor Fox pushing that 36 at JC Motorsports Chevrolet. Still three wide throughout this pack. Junior, a little bit loose, can't hold that bottom. Neighbor Fox gonna look for the lead here. Junior trying to get a push from the 12. Blocks that outside lane. Here comes Roberto Count Jr. making his own lane on the bottom. Four wide. A little bit of contact between David Scott and Leland Hill. Roberto Count Jr. What a move, an aggressive move late in the race. Five laps to go. 36 to 87. But here comes Roberto Count Jr. with a burst of speed. Pushed by Zach Carrington. Forced it four wide. And here he is, looking for the lead. Going to get a huge run on the 36. Where is the 36 going to go? Does he block the outside or does he block the inside? No run coming from either lane right now. 21 going to fall back in line. So I drafted the 87 now. Wanting to push from Zach Carrington in the 44. He's going to get a run on the 36 here. Does he look low? Junior stays up high. He's going to come down the block. Four laps to go. Switching back and forth between lanes, but Roberto has a really strong car. He tries to get low. He can't get there. The 21 gets underneath. Three wide in the back. Matthew Hill now trying to force his way through the pack. Zach Carrington gets enough of a run to clear. Side draft to the 87. Very smart move, and now he's going to look three wide. Junior trying to get a good push. I don't think he has enough to clear, though. The pack's starting to shuffle out. Look at Matthew Hill. He might be thinking about it. He thinks better of it. Three laps to go. Four wide by Drew Walker. 
the intensity pick it up, they bang doors. Contact. How are they keeping this straight? Zach Carradine slides up the track. Still four wide, they clear it out. Drew Walker looking for the lead. Trying to get the push, I don't think he has the help. Can Zach Carradine get low, he's not clear. Olivia Reynolds now looking for second. Drew Walker trying to hang on. He came out of nowhere up front at the end of this race with a four wide move, much like Roberto Clown Jr. Two laps to go in the class. Zach Carrington holding all strong on the outside line. Olivia Reynolds trying to get a push from Trey Sean Meeks. Walker's going to block that inside line. The 44 starting to fade. 77 moves up top trying to get a block the 44 who got a run. Through turn three and four, Walker still holding on to the lead. Here we go. White flag in the clash. One more lap to go. Drew Walker with a commanding lead. I think Olivia Reynolds backed up. Let's see if they can produce a run. Three wide throughout the entire pack. No help for Olivia Reynolds. Drew Walker has pulled out to a substantial lead. 19 trying to push that character. I don't think it's going to be enough. No help on that inside lane. Zach Carrington gets a huge run. He's clear of Olivia Reynolds. Can he get the run? Through turns three and four for the final time. Coming down to the trial. It's not going to be enough. Drew Walker is going to win the season 10 clash at Daytona. What a race. What a final set of laps. And what a move to pull off the victory for Walker. That four wide move. I'm assuming he saw it for a hurdle crown junior, but the difference was he timed it better. And he was able to hold on to the lead. Blake Parker Enterprises picks up a huge win ahead of the Daytona 250. And Drew Walker has a huge momentum booster right there. The fastest lap goes to Leland Hill. He has a hot rat. A hot rod for Daytona. And man, what what a race we just witnessed. You know, what a just final laps, no wrecks, everyone raced each other clean. It might have been a bit of door banging, but everyone kept it together. And just wow. See all these drivers that you know kept it together. I mean, these two is a little bit of heartbreak that somehow Henry Guo passed Fonjer Wilson. So there's that. Fell 25 seconds behind, lost the draft, along with Sheridan, Nick Tanner, and Eric Zuko. But everybody else stayed within a second. And you see Drew Walker went won the class with a tremendous move. Zach Carrington finished second. Just came up a little short. Didn't have enough of a push at the end there. Uh, Meeks finished third. Olivia Reynolds fell back to fourth after that outside line. Just fell apart at the end of the race. Leland Hill come out with the top five and the fastest lap. Owen Scott finished sixth. Matthew Hill seventh. Alejo eighth. Uh, senior with the ninth place finish. And uh, Roberto Count Jr. fell back to tenth after that four wide move he did initially. Ahead of Drew Walker. Uh, Hayden Chevalier, Wright Jr., Nathan Orman, Sabre Fox all ran out of your top 15. They were up there at the end, but they just timed it a little bit wrong. And You know, uh, Eddie Flores Jr., David Scott, you know, everybody else wished they had a little bit of finish. Just a little errors through pit stops. But, uh, I mean, wow, what a race we just witnessed. And hopefully that's the sign of come for the Daytona 250. I hope that's as clean as uh, it gets. So, I mean. Hey, I'll see you next time. This has been AJ Kelson, the SRNN broadcast of the PMU Clash for Season 10. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll catch you next time on the SRNN.